crop production and management. Think about the activities that you do during the whole day like brushing, taking bath, going to school, doing homework, eating and playing. Have you ever thought from where the energy you get for doing all these activities? How do you feel energetic? It's the food from which you get all the energy to work, play and study. Can you think of a day or two without having food? Have you ever thought from where does this food come? All the food that we eat come from plants and animals. We have learnt earlier about green plants which synthesize their food by the process of photosynthesis. Animals including humans cannot make their food by themselves. They obtain food from plants. It is easier to get food for a few people but if we have to provide food for the people of whole country we will have to obtain it on a large scale. Hence regular production, systematic management and proper distribution of food is very important. You must have read about the early man in your history books. Primitive man was basically a nomad, a gatherer and a hunter of food. He used to gather seeds, berries, leaves, edible roots, nuts and fruits of wild plants. He also hunted small animals for food using stone tools. Primitive man suddenly observed that seeds on falling upon the soil start germinating and grow into plants. This gave him the idea of cultivation of plants to obtain food. Again he found that water was essential for the growth of plants. So he settled near water bodies like rivers and lakes. Thus from a food gatherer man became a food producer. This was the beginning of the agriculture. This happened around 10,000 years ago. Agriculture and crop plants the word agriculture is derived from two Latin words, agri or agri, meaning field and cultura, meaning to cultivate. The science and practice of farming and cultivation of crop plants is called agriculture. The plants grown and tended in a field are called crop plants. In olden times, due to outdated agricultural implements, the production was less. But nowadays new technologies have boosted agricultural practices and crop yielding along with rearing of livestock including poultry, animal husbandry. Humans cultivate plants in the fields to obtain food such as cereals and pulses. A wide area of land where a crop is cultivated is called a field. Cereals are tall grasses from which Nutritious seeds called grains are obtained on cultivation. Grains provide us carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, minerals and fibers. Pulses are protein rich seeds of leguminous plants. Vegetables and fruits are rich sources of minerals and vitamins. Wheat, paddy and maize are important cereals in the world. Humans also grow plants for ornamental and decoration purposes under horticulture. The branch of agriculture that deals with the production of fruits, vegetables, flowers and decorative plants is called horticulture. Classification of crops. Crops are classified on the basis of crop produce. The product obtained from crops is called crop produce. Example, cereals, pulses, oil seeds, etc. Seasons. In India, there are two types of crops. They are Kharif and Rabi. Kharif crops. These crops require more water for their growth. Therefore, they are grown during summer and monsoon seasons. These crops are cultivated during June or July and harvested in September or October. Crops like paddy, maize, cotton, soya bean are Kharif crops. Rabi crops. These crops require less water, so they are grown during winter season. These crops are cultivated during October to December and harvested in March or April. Crops like wheat, pea, gram and mustard are rabi crops. Purples. On this basis, crops are classified as food crop, 
subsistence crop and cash crop food crop the crop which is grown for food example wheat paddy maize etc subsistence crop the crop which is grown to fulfill the needs of a farmer and not for selling purpose example wheat corn rice etc cash crop the crop which is grown mainly for profit and not for use by the farmer example tea coconut cotton etc the major crop plant grown in india are shown in the following diagram agricultural practices the various tasks performed by the farmer to raise a good yield of crops are called agricultural practices for doing various activities in cultivation of plants a farmer needs different types of tools these tools are called agricultural implements task implements used function of implements number 1 preparation of soil plowing or tilling leveling animal driven wooden or iron plows or man driver tractor tractor or animal driven iron or wooden levelers pulverizing uprooting the stubble making soil surface even for uniform irrigation making the soil spongy and airy number 2 sowing manually or by drill by hand or seed drill putting seeds in the prepared soil number 3 addition of manure and fertilizer by hand or using drill or sprayer addition of nutrients needed by plants number 4 irrigation sprinklers or wells or tube wells or canals supplying water to plants number 5 weeding trowel harrow spraying weedy sides removal of weeds unwanted plants number 6 crop protection sprayer or manual or knapsack sprayer aerial spray by low flying helicopters control of diseases caused by plant pests bacteria fungi etc number 7 harvesting sickle harvester combined for both harvesting and threshing reaping of crop plant number 8 threshing manually thresher combine animals separation of grains number 9 winnowing winnowers combine thresher removal of hay and chaff number 10 storage silos gunny bags clay and metal containers storing grains for future buffer stock preparation of soil before sowing the crop seeds the soil of the field is loosened and turned the process of loosening and turning the soil is called plowing or tilling plowing is done to facilitate ventilation in soil it makes soil suitable for the growth of microorganisms and other organisms like earthworm which makes the soil fertile by decomposing the remains of plants and animals plowing makes soil loosen that helps the roots to get sufficient oxygen to breathe it also helps in mixing of fertilizers and organic matter uniformly besides due to plowing nutrient rich soil comes to the top that helps plants to absorb these nutrients more efficiently the instrument used for plowing is called a plow the plow may be made of wood and iron or the iron only for plowing of the soil domestic animals like ox and camel are used now in big farms tractors are used for plowing with cultivator which saves time and labor of plowing manually the plowed soil often has big lumps that need to be broken the process of making soil surface even and smooth is called leveling the process is done with the help of soil leveler leveling ensures uniform irrigation and distribution of minerals in the field it helps to prevent soil erosion sowing when soil is plowed and leveled seeds are sown in it before sowing seeds selection of healthy seeds is done by putting seeds in water defective floating seeds are rejected the seeds which remain submerged in water are selected for sowing the seeds should be sown at right depth in the soil if sown at greater depth they will not get sufficient air for respiration and on germination 
the shoot will not come out of the soil. On the other hand, if seeds are sown on the surface, they will be eaten by birds. Also, there should be proper spacing between the seeds so that there is less competition for water, nutrients, sunlight, etc. Sowing can be done manually or by using a seed drill. The scattering of seeds manually by hand in the field is called broadcasting. It is an easy method of sowing seed, but it has some disadvantages such as seeds are not evenly distributed and spacing between the seeds is not appropriate. Sowing of seeds with the help of seed drill is a better method because in this way seeds are sown at proper depth and distance. Besides, the damage caused by birds is also prevented. Sometimes seeds are not planted in the field. First, they are planted in seed bed called nursery. When they grow in small plantlets, they are called seedlings. The process of transferring healthy seedlings from the seed bed nursery to the main field is called transplantation. Transplantation is common in the cultivation of paddy and vegetables. During transplantation, seedlings are planted in a well prepared field at a proper distance in rows. This ensures that plants are able to receive sufficient light, water and space. Addition of manure and fertilizer. Manure like other plants, crop plants obtain their mineral nutrients from the soil. Continuous growing of crop in the field causes deficiency of nutrients in the soil. So manure is added to the soil to make up the deficiency of nutrients. The process of adding manure to the soil is called manuring. Manure is an organic substance made of waste products of animals and plants such as cow dung, urine, plant wastes and some organic wastes. Fertilizer. In addition to manures, using of fertilizer is another way of enriching the soil with nutrients. Fertilizers are mixtures of chemical compounds rich in nitrogen N, phosphorus P and potassium K. These are human made chemical substances prepared in factories. However, excessive use of fertilizers harms soil by making it porous. Besides, these get washed into water bodies such as river and pond and thus harm aquatic animals. Also, this leads to the release of harmful greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Therefore, fertilizers should not be overused and controlled use of fertilizers is needed to avoid the hazards to plant health, human health and environment as well. Differences between manures and fertilizers. Manures, fertilizers. Number one, these are not soluble in water, so they are not easily absorbed by the roots of the plants. Number one, these are soluble in water and are absorbed by the plants easily. Number two, these are organic substances. Number two, these are inorganic substances. Number three, these are not nutrient specific. Number three, these are nutrient specific. Number four, these are bulky and hence difficult to store and transport. Number four, these are in powdered form, hence are not bulky and can be easily stored and transported. Number five, their excessive use does not harm the soil texture. They provide humus to the soil. Number five, their excessive use can change the chemical composition of the soil and also pollute water. Number six, these restore the soil texture and help in water retention. Number six, these may damage the soil texture and make it more porous. Activity one, aim to show growth of seedlings with manure and fertilizer. Materials required, germinated gram seeds, three pots, fertilizer, manure, soil and water. Procedure, take three pots marked as A, B and C. In pot A, put soil and manure. In pot B, put soil and fertilizer. In pot C, put some soil without adding anything. Plant the germinated gram seedling in three pots and pour equal amount of water to pots A, B and C. Keep them for some days and water them regularly and observe 
their growth. Observation. This activity shows that fertilizers help farmers to get better yield of crops, whereas manure improves soil texture and water retaining capacity. Irrigation. Water is necessary for the growth and development of plants. If plants do not get sufficient water, they shrivel up. Watering of crop plants at regular intervals is called irrigation. The major source of water is rainfall. However, amount of rain varies and does not always supply the right amount of water at the right time. Therefore, farmers should have an alternative source of water near the fields like tube wells, rivers, lakes and ponds which deliver water through canals. There are some traditional as well as modern methods of irrigation which are well known. The traditional methods are Dekli, Mot and Rahat in which cattle of humans are used to pull water from the well. These methods are economic but not efficient. The modern methods of irrigation include sprinkler system and drip system. Sprinkler system in this system water is sprinkled over the crops like rain. This method is useful for uneven land and the land having sandy soil. Drip system in this system water is allowed to fall drop by drop just on the roots of crop plants. This method reduces the wastage of water. It is an excellent method to irrigate crops that grow in water shortage region. The amount of water supplied should be in adequate amount as excess of water harms the crops. Continued water logging increases the amount of salt in the soil and retards the growth of crops. Weeding the removal of unwanted plants, weeds, growing along with desired crop from the field is called weeding. The most common weeds are convolvulus, hidden curry, wild oat, grass. Weeds are required to be removed because they compete with crop plants for their basic needs like water, sunlight, nutrients and space, therefore reduce crop yield. Different types of weeds grow naturally with different crops during the different seasons of the year. Weeds often grow faster than the main crop. The process of removing weeds from the field is done by two ways. Number one manually, by pulling out the weeds with the help of trowel, khurpa or harrow. Number two, by use of weedicides, certain chemicals called weedicides or herbicides are sprayed in the fields with the help of a sprayer. These chemicals check the growth of many weeds but do not affect the main crop. Some common weedicides are 2,4-D, Dalapon, Metalachlor and Simazine. Weedicides are poisonous chemicals. Therefore, the grains as well as other crop products must be washed thoroughly before use. During spraying of these chemicals, the farmers should cover their mouth and nose. Protection of crops from pests and diseases. Pests are those organisms which damage crops and make them unfit for human consumption. The most common pests are insects, rats, rabbits and birds. Microbes like bacteria, fungi and viruses also cause diseases to crop plants. Some chemicals called pesticides are sprayed on crops to destroy pests. Pesticides include insecticides as well as rodenticides. Insecticides are used to kill insects. Some insecticides are BHC, benzene, hexachloride or gamaxine, DDT, etc. Rodenticides are used to kill rodents. Examples are warfarin, zinc phosphate, etc. Besides, fungicides are used to kill fungi. Birds can be scared away from the fields by installing scarecrows. Only recommended dosage of pesticides should be used. Overdose may affect plant health and environment. Harvesting, threshing and winnowing. Once the crop matures, it is harvested. The process of cutting and gathering a mature crop is known as harvesting. It is done either manually by means of sickles or by some other mechanical means such as harvester. Pongal, Besakhi, Holi, Diwali, Nabana 
are the special festivals associated with harvesting and are celebrated with great joy in different states of India. Grains need to be separated from the harvested crop. The process of separation of grains from the harvested crop is known as threshing. Threshing can be done manually by beating the crop stock against a hard floor or by using the machine called thresher. A machine called combine is used for both harvesting and threshing simultaneously. The process of separating the grains from the chaff with the help of wind is called winnowing. The stem of the crop is cut into small pieces, stored as hay in hay stacks and fed to cattle as food. Hay which is given to cattle is called fodder. Storage. Grains obtained by threshing are dried in the open to prevent the growth of microorganisms on them. The dried grains are stored in suitable containers called bins or in jute bags. The storage of grains on large scale is done in granaries in silos. The storage is necessary to protect the grains from pests, insects and rats. It is important to store grains dry. If the soil is moist, fungi or molds can grow. An extra stock called buffer stock is always maintained to compensate when there is shortfall in production due to some reasons such as monsoon failure, drought and floods. Improvement of crop production The population of our country is increasing at a very fast rate. Agricultural products must also increase. Most impressive growth in food grain production in our country occurred during Green Revolution 1960-1980. We became self-sufficient in food grains. The period is called the golden era. The following are the factors which are responsible for increased production of crops. Use of improved seeds or crops developed by plant breeding. Improvement in the soil fertility by using fertilizers. Protection of plants from pests by using pesticides. Control of plant diseases. Better storage facilities. Scientists and farmers are using new techniques to improve crop variety. One of such techniques is plant breeding. Any single variety of a plant species may not possess all the useful characters. Most of these can be brought together into one variety by hybridization. It is a technique to improve crops by cross breeding to different varieties. Hybridization is done by crossing two or more varieties having the desired genes. The hybrids Thus, produce are then selected, crossbred repeatedly to obtain a variety of maximum yield and utility. When the sturdier plant is crossbred with the better yielding variety or is hybridized, a new daughter plant is produced which combines the qualities of both parents. Some other techniques are field fallow, crop rotation, and mixed cropping. A plant derives its nutrition largely from the humus layer and the topsoil. Repeated farming depletes the soil of its nutrients, supply and reduce crop growth. To prevent this, a simple and easy method is to leave the land without farming for few seasons. By doing this, soil naturally regains the nutrients. This method of replenishing nutrients is called field fallow. Another way is to cultivate two different types of plants alternately. For example, maize and wheat are grown alternately with leguminous plants like groundnut. The groundnut plant with its nitrogen fixing bacteria called rhizobium enriches the soil with nutrients. Rotating different crops thus ensures natural method of replenishment of nutrients. This method is called crop rotation. Sometimes two or more crops are grown together in the same field in such a way that they fulfill the nutrients of each other. This practice is advantageous because it utilizes the nutrients of the soil more efficiently, resulting in greater yield. This is because the nutritional requirements of two crops are different and the field is given more time to replenish its nutrients. This method is called mixed cropping or multiple cropping. Mixed cropping is done in order to save time and labor. Example, groundnut and cotton are often grown together in mixed cropping for better production of crops. Nitrogen cycle. Air contains about 78% nitrogen in atmosphere. Water bodies also contain nitrogen. Nitrogen is an essential component of proteins, vitamins 
and nucleic acids which are present in all living things. The cyclic process by which nitrogen element is circulated continuously through the living and non-living components of the biosphere is called nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen cycle has the following steps. Number 1 nitrogen fixation, number 2 nitrogen assimilation, number 3 ammonification, number 4 nitrification, number 5 denitrification. Nitrogen fixation, it is of two types. First atmospheric nitrogen fixation, during lightning in the sky when temperature is high, the nitrogen gas present in the atmosphere reacts with oxygen to produce oxides of nitrogen which get dissolved in rainwater forming dilute nitric acid. This reacts with alkalis of the soil to form nitrates. Number 2 Biological Nitrogen Fixation Atmospheric nitrogen is converted into nitrogenous compound by living organisms. Nitrogen fixing bacteria like Rhizobium and Clostridium which live in the root nodules of leguminous plants and convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates. Activity 2 Aim to observe the root nodules of a leguminous plant. Materials required a leguminous plant pea or bean, blade, water and microscope. Procedure Dig up a legume plant such as pea and bean. Wash the soil from the roots and check the nodules and its color. Make section of nodules with the help of your teacher and observe under microscope. Nitrogen assimilation. Inorganic nitrogenous compounds are converted into organic compounds that become a part of living organisms. This conversion of inorganic compounds into organic compounds is called nitrogen assimilation. The plants absorb nitrogenous compounds from the soil and water and convert them into plant proteins. Ammonification. When plants and animals die and decompose in presence of decomposers, organic nitrogen gets converted into ammonia. This process of conversion of organic compounds such as proteins into ammonia is called ammonification. Nitrification. Ammonia produced during the decomposition of dead plants and animals gets covered into nitrates in presence of nitrifying bacteria. This process of conversion of ammonia into nitrates is called nitrification. Denitrification. The conversion of nitrate salt which is present in the soil to release nitrogen gas is called denitrification. It is carried out in the soil by bacteria called pseudomonas. Food from animals. Though plants are the main source of food, animals also provide us food in the form of meat, eggs, honey, etc. Human being domesticate animals for specific purpose. All domesticated animals used by man are called livestock. Steps needed to be considered in animal husbandry are breeding, feeding, weeding, heeding and caring. Breeding. This is the method of producing animals with desired characteristics. Through breeding, we can get high meat and milk yielding animals by selective breeding. Feeding. Animals have to be fed with balanced diet for their healthy growth and development. Weeding, the elimination of harmful and undesirable characteristics for next generation. Heeding and caring, the proper care and management of animals to ensure their better health. Cattle, cows, buffaloes and bullocks are known as cattle. Use of cattle, cows and buffaloes provide milk and other dairy products. They are called milch animals. Bullocks are used in agricultural practices such as plowing. Cow dung is very good source of manure and gober gas. Poultry. Poultry farming or rearing of poultry birds like chicken and ducks is done in poultry farms. These birds are reared for meat and eggs. Poultry products are rich source of animal fats, proteins and vitamins. Poultry birds breed faster. An egg. Hen starts laying egg at the age of 6 months. The egg laying hen is known as broody hen. The egg has a yellow portion in center which is called the yolk 
and is rich in fats and lipids. The Y portion is rich in protein called albumin. The X shell is made up of calcium carbon. Activity 3. Aim to differentiate between a spoiled egg and a healthy egg. Materials required some eggs, water and gas to. Procedure. Take some eggs from the poultry farm. Heat water to about 50 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius in a vessel. Put the eggs into the warm water. Observe after a few minutes. Observation. The spoiled egg floats on the surface while healthy egg remains underwater. Fishery. Fish is a very rich source of protein and is easily available. Oil obtained from some fish is rich in vitamin A and vitamin D. India is very rich in both freshwater and marine fish. Honeybees. Honeybees provide us two important substances, honey and wax. Since these bees provide us honey, therefore they are named as honeybees. Bees are economically very important. There are three categories of bees. Number one, queen bee. Number two, worker. Number three, drones. In large scale, it is done by keeping the bees in large artificial beehives called apiaries. Honeybees suck nectar of flowers and keep it in their beehives. Honey is a mixture of sugar, minerals, water and enzyme. Honey is used for preparing Ayurvedic drugs, antiseptic in ointments, helping in digestion as enzyme is present in the honey, making cosmetics, ointments, candles, etc. in which bee wax is used. Science in the vicinity Bananas are the number one food crop in the world. India is the biggest producer of milk and second largest producer of fruits and vegetables.